Hello and welcome to another tape recorder video, this time featuring the Tanberg Model 3 from around 1957 or so. The Model 3 is a bit of a special recorder, not so much in itself, but because of its position in tape recording history. The thing is, uh, magnetic tape is 6.25 millimeters wide. Here's the leader tape for this reel. And um, initially tape recorders recorded on the full width of the tape, so-called full, full track uh, tape recorders. But quite quickly it was realized that if one recorded on only half the track there were basically two advantages. One advantage is that you get twice as much economy from the tape, but secondly it means that you don't have to rewind the tape after each recording. Basically you put the tape on like this, and then once you've played the tape through you flip it over and record on the other half of the tape. Thus you can record twice the playing time but you also get a complete recording that covers uh, after the complete recording the tape is back on the original reel. And this was termed half-track recording. It was uh, the most common throughout the 50s I would say. Um, but another invention came along in the mid-50s and that was stereo. Stereo of course requires two channels and one way to implement that is to use two tracks on a half-track recorder but record them from the same end of the tape. And then you're back to the same disadvantage as you have with full track recording after the end of the tape it's you basically need to rewind it because you've recorded on the full width of the tape. Now when stereo came there wasn't a lot of stereo material available. Radio Stereo in, in radio wasn't available. Gramophone records had not yet uh, achieved, stereo gramophone records had not yet achieved momentum. So one uh, idea was to uh, offer stereo recordings on reel-to-reel -reel tape. Um, and for that purpose uh, a couple of manufacturers such as Tanberg here or Philips uh, introduced stereo machines which could play back stereo material recorded in the half-track stereo format but they could only record in mono the idea I think being that uh, since there wasn't a lot of stereo material uh, sorry since, since there wasn't a lot of stereo material available on records or radio there was no real point for the general user to record anything in stereo and the idea of record making your own stereo recordings was probably a bit far-fetched at the time so that, uh, enter the Model 3 stereo, which was Tanberg's first stereo machine and a fairly early one for being a, a consumer machine. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this machine uh, by playing back a tape which is recorded in half-track mono. The idea being to demonstrate how the different tracks work. Now this machine has a, a series of standard, standard um, standard uh, controls. There's the joystick here, standard Tanberg, there's a record playback switch, a speed selector here which selects between three speeds, and a volume control. But here, hanging off the side of the volume control, is a stereo mono switch. And what does that work? Well, this machine has two, uh, a two-track head, uh, a stereo two-track head, and two separate amplifiers, one over here and one over here. And in the stereo mode, each half of the tape head feeds each of the amplifiers, and the output from that is can be connected to two speakers on using connectors on the back. There is an internal speaker, a single one, which can be switched between the upper track to the left or the lower track to the right or turned off completely. So essentially this is more of a monitor speaker. In the mono position, both amplifiers are connected to the upper track, which is the track that would have been used if you made a standard half-track mono recording. Uh, and the idea then being that if you had your stereo system set up, you'd hear the same sound in both loudspeakers. So if we uh, wind on, wind into this tape a bit, and uh, play back the top half. We get a piece of music played forward. If I put the switch to the right, there's not yet a recording be uh, on the back of the tape, but if I'll move move in a bit further, we hear what's recorded on the second side of the tape, the lower half, which has been recorded from the other end, and is that therefore backwards when we listen to it on the stereo machine. If I put the stereo mono switch in the mono position, I get the same recording on both uh, from both both amplifiers because they're both connected to the top half of the tape. 
Apart from this stereo capability, this recorder has ordinary record playback uh, facilities. So if I thread a tape, note how the right hand wheel and classic Tamburg, uh, Tamburg tries to go the opposite direction because that's how the braking system works. We'll wind on a bit into the tape and we'll get out a microphone. This is a slightly more microphone than designed for this recorder, but it's the same type. It's a crystal microphone, uh, very high quality uh, since it's a Tamburg mic. And we'll uh, simply put the recorder on and turn the volume control up. I don't know if you can see the recording level meter here that starts to, to move um, and indicate that a signal is being recorded on the tape. Now, no matter if I put the switch in the stereo or mono position, this will only record on the top half of the tape. The lower half of the tape uh, is never recorded with this particular recorder. So we'll wind the tape back and listen to the recording. Whoop, it ran off the reel there. Let's see now. meter here that starts to, to move um, and indicate that a signal is being recorded on the tape. Now, no matter if I put the switch in the stereo or mono position, this will only record on the top half of the tape. There are also three tape speeds. If I put this at the lower speed, it'll play back the recording to slow because it was recorded at the higher speed. And if I put the switch to the right-hand position, I get this Mickey Mouse effect because it's playing back faster than it was recorded. Normally you'd play back at the same speed as the tape was recorded. So with that we'll wind the tape back and enjoy the automatic end stop which, which switches off the motor when it senses a piece of metal foil here shorting this, uh, this pin here to the guide pin and just beside it. And uh, the thing is that this recorder, this type of recorder was not long lived because the next big uh, invention along the line when it comes to tape recorders was four track recording. And that means that you record on two tracks on each side of the tape for a total of four tracks. And that was the most common format moving forward towards the 1960s and into the 70s. Some manufacturers like Tamburg still offered half track machines, but the bulk of machines shown, sold for consumer use were four track recorders. And then we're back to recording stereo, two tracks from each end of the tape uh, for a total of four tracks. Um, or you could use those uh, a four track machine and record the tracks individually. So you've got four mono tracks out of it, which any way you look at it, it doubles ta the tape economy compared to two track. But that meant that these two track recorders with their stereo playback mono only record capabilities became a very, uh, a very decisive oddity from the mid 60s. Uh, and Tamburg never, in fact, never made a machine of specifically this type again. So anyway, this has been a demonstration of the Tamburg Model 3 two-track stereo recorder from around 1957. Thank you and goodbye.